Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Committed Critics, a pop culture podcast where we're not only committed to our opinions, but also each other. Aww. Aww. I'm Kevin Lau. I'm Ryan Davis. I'm Zach Wright. And I'm Jordan Wright. And today... (laughs) <laughs> You're still giggling after yeah. saying that. It's still weird to hear. It's still kind of weird to hear out loud. Uh, today, we are talking about a show that everyone, or practically everyone, has seen and discussed. But uh, Ryan and I have never seen or discussed the show before. Uh, Zach, you're the one that challenged us to watch this. Hell, what is this? This is Ted Lasso, everyone. And let me tell you. It's perfect television. I say the only complaint I have about Ted Lasso is that it's on Apple TV. Uh, <laughs> but besides that, um, so Ted Lasso is a dramedy comedy. How would you describe the genre of Ted Lasso? It's, it's a dramedy. Dramedy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It aired on um, Apple TV. It has three seasons. Um, the main the main star is Jason Sudeikis, who is also one of the head writers on the show, as well as. Basically, everyone else in the cast is also a writer on the show. Uh, so, like, Brett Goldstein, nice. who plays um, Roy. Roy, and then I can't remember... Brendan Hunt, who plays Beard. Yep, they're also all writers in the show. Wow. Uh, yep. Are they all comedians? No, I think just Sudeikis has the SNL roots, to my knowledge. Uh, it's funny enough, so the Ted Lasso started as a, like, ad for the Premier League on NBC, like, a while back. Uh-huh. So, like, there is, like, a whole, like, ad of, like, Jason Snake is playing this character, like, as he's trying to, like, promote this new, like, NBC channel. Mm-hmm. And so this is where, that's where guys start, and then they just kind of took it, and Apple TV, like, wanted the idea, and they ran with it, and now they have three seasons of a TV show. Yeah, and it was just kind of, like, the the sketch was basically just, oh, this, like, this, this is just, this uh good lo- time loving guy, it's just kind of, like, Having a good time, like at promoting sports, but he doesn't know a lot about sports. Is that like what the basically? Yeah, it's like a, it's like an all American Midwest football coach from Kansas is like it's the same mm-hmm. premise as the show, where he just gets he's like you know I don't know a lot about coaching, but it should be all about the same, right? And then like he's doing his mm-hmm. whole like bit just with like football like football players in the UK. Okay, got it. Yep. Um, I will say to Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca. Oh yes, she has um. She has kind of a comedic background because she did a lot of like West End productions. Mm -hmm. Um, She was the lady in the lake in Spamalot. Camelot, Spamalot. Hang on. Jordan, look that up. She was also. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Some of these are comedies. Some of these are not. (laughs) She's looking it up. Uh, Uh Hannah Wyden was also in. What was it, Kevin? Spamilton. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just just throwing it out there as a joke. But anyways, go ahead. Uh, She was also in Game of Thrones. Oh, um, other it was like a very. It was one of the. It was the one where like Cersei is like walking down the thing and the woman yelling shame. That's that's Rebecca. So <laughs> she she's the woman yelling shame. Yes. It was spam okay. a lot. It's spam a lot. Cool. Uh, I have not seen Game of Thrones. I have only know like a few of the key scenes, and uh, that's one of the key scenes that I know of. Yes, correct. I only seen se- two seasons of it, and then I stopped because everyone told me it was terrible. Fair enough. <laughs> So I'm told the books are better, so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, moving on. What are your guys' overall thoughts? Who wants to go first? Kevin, Me? go ahead. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew I would absolutely love this show. I just never got around to it, mainly due its Apple due to its Apple TV exclusivity. Uh, I, this may be a weird hill to die on, but I'm going to die on it anyway. I don't think Apple should have a streaming service. They have no reason to have a media company and yet they do. Uh, that's fair. Now, after watching season one, I believe the exclusivity is not as big of a flex as Apple thinks it is because this is a show that everyone should see. Uh, therefore Apple making it super exclusive to their platform actually makes them look more like assholes uh, than it is like, oh, look, we got a really great show. You should subscribe. Um, Because this, uh, as I've discovered after this, just Zach challenged it, is not available even in physical release, not available to on video on demand on any platform. It is Apple TV only, unless you know someone who can sail the high seas. (laughs) (laughs) Ryan. 
All right, so I'm going to be the Rebecca of this episode. Um, I wanted to hate this show, mainly because Zach tricked me into put, putting it on here as our <laughs> challenge. Um, but I can't. It's actually very likable, and it had good growth from the start to the, of the season to the end. Um, the comedy and emotional beats were well done. I I did laugh at a lot of it. I did. Yes. I was very much like, okay, this is good. I, I'm happy with it. You spoke to another son today. You spoke to God. <laughs> no, Iconic. my favorite one, my favorite line is Jesus Christ, and this is my son Sydney. Oh, forgive me, Father. <laughs> 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 I forgot about that one. That was a good one. There's some definitely some great jokes in here. I need to see you say it now. We got them, boys. We did it. Celebrate good times. Come on, come on. Oh, we finally God. got Ryan, guys. Let's go. Woo! Hook, line, and sinker. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome. Mm-hmm. What What's the fandom called? I have no, no lassoers. I have no idea. All right. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why Zach, go ahead. Up? Say your yep. thing. Uh, having seen all of Ted Lasso from start to finish, I believe it's one of the most. It's a per television show. Uh, with that said, obviously my bias will show for this whole episode, but season one slaps. There are so many subs here that we were re- when we were rewatching re- it, we're like, holy shit, that gets paid off at the end of the, like in the very end of the show. Like there are so many things that they, like the old nuggets they set up that they're going to pay off later. Um, mm-hmm. Things that like are kind of like minuscule comparison, but some are like bigger, like bigger, um, like plot points, too. It's some of the best acting I've seen and some of the best writing I've seen in television. Like, like hats yeah. off to Sadekis Hunt and the whole team that wrote that wrote the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jordan, before you continue with your mm-hmm. with your thoughts, uh, so Reddit has a few options of what Ted Lasso fans are called. Obviously, there's Diamond Dogs. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, there's also uh, Last Holes. Um. <laughs> uh, Believers is one of them. Ted mm-hmm. Heads. Uh, wankers. <laughs> wankers is a good one. Uh, yeah, and then uh, one of them is also My Kind of People. So there you go. <laughs> my Lassoers, Kind of People. <laughs> Teddy's Rom Communist. What? That's Rom Communist. That's a season, oh, that's a season two reference. That's season two okay. reference. Okay. Right, you have me a coach. <laughs> All right. That's a... Uh, I'll also be do. a last hole. Last hose. Last hose. Last hose. Last hose. All right, Jordan. What's your overall thoughts on Ted Lasso? Well, I mean, I've also seen all of Ted Lasso. <laughs> so mm-hmm. and it is one of my favorite shows I've watched. I I honestly think this is one that you can just watch over and over and over again and not get tired of it. Um, mm-hmm. the humor, the acting, the overall humanity shown in each and every character is just so well done. And I'm just I'm just so glad this show exists. Like Zach was the one that actually wanted to watch this when we first moved down here. Um, And I was like, okay, like, I don't really know anything about it. And the more we were watching it, like the first couple episodes, I was like, okay, like, this isn't that bad. And then it just like picks up and all of a sudden I'm I'm so invested in this fake football team, just wanting them to be successful and, and everything. And it's just, I don't know. It's just so good. It That's hits. really it. It yeah, hits. It hits. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving on uh, to more specifically, now that we are in spoiler mode, what is one thing we liked about Ted Lasso? Uh, Jordan, Zach, do you want to give your 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 thoughts on that one uh, yeah. before sure. the newcomers come in? Yeah. Jordan, go ahead. So. Obviously, I love all the little quips and sayings Ted says because they're just so clever. Like it almost it takes me a second to process what he says sometimes. But afterwards, I just crack up like it's (laughs) just it. I don't know. It's just the delivery of it and the way that like it just seems so natural for his character to say something like that. It's just it. It's just a perfect puzzle. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also think the, the panic attack scene is one of the best depictions of how a panic attack actually feels. Um, I am someone who gets panic attacks and I remember watching this scene for the first time and I just felt in awe that a show was actually able to show how it feels. Um, and honestly, where it's like the walls are where it feels like the walls are closing in around you and you can't breathe or get a grip on what's happening and having someone there to kind of pull you out of it is it was just so beautifully done. And Mm -hmm. 
when Zach and I were watching it for the first time, like I, I kind of turned to me and was like, is that what it's like? And I said, absolutely. Like that's, that's exactly how it feels. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's nice to kind of have something that is accurate and is easy, like kind of easy to watch. Like, don't get me wrong. It's, it's still, it was hard for me to watch it. Cause it was like, I felt like I was watching my life for a second. But it was. Um, Wait, you were a football coach? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, you saying let it go in a club and. Uh, yeah, just had a panic attack. No, but like just disassociating <laughs> and then having a panic attack after. Yeah, that's I've done that. Um, so it's just like just things like that. Like it's just it's nice to kind of have that perspective because, you know, there's like some shows and stuff that try to showcase how mental illness is and how depression can look and anxiety and sometimes they do a good job but i think this has been one of the best depictions of it yeah for sure uh i will say that there are definitely worse the, the, the some of the worst depictions out there are pretty bad yeah uh, yeah made by people who obviously have never experienced it mm -hmm. and they're just like have it in there it's like oh we're inclusive or just doing lip service and uh don't do that if you plan to be that as a as a as a artist or writer or creator of some sort. Uh, be genuine in what you're trying to do, and because you see, as you can see, it's working in Ted Lasso's favor. Yeah, uh, Zach, what are your what's one thing you liked? Yeah, piggybacking off what Jordan just said, uh, my two favorite scenes in season one are Ted's first panic attack after Let It Go in the club and mm -hmm. uh the dart scene so having never experienced a full panic attack myself it really opened my eyes to what someone goes through like what my wife goes through basically <laughs> um i've never been able to understand or imagine how it feels and it's the closest i get to see that and like experience what a character or what a person goes through mm -hmm. um so that was very eye-opening for me as a as an individual uh and also the dart scene when ted defends uh rebecca's honor in front of rupert in the pub I think that is one of the best written scenes I think I've seen in a while. The back and oh, forth, yeah. the back and forth between those two characters, the layers where it's like, it's just Rupert being a rich asshole, underestimating Ted. Like Ted even says it himself, people have underestimated him my entire life. And it's like, but I've been playing darts in a bar since I was 16 years old. And he just kicks his fucking ass. Barbecue mm -hmm. sauce. Barbecue sauce. And it just hits. Um, and the comedy is just so clever and so well written. Yeah, for sure. Uh, how about you, Ryan? So for me, um, the whole point, like the whole thing I enjoyed about the show was watching the growth of the team as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, I I know I like the dart scene, I like the, lock, uh, the panic attack scene, but the locker room scene is probably my favorite part of the series where they all come together and just share like all their different, like different things that make them them, especially Jamie's. Because hearing that stuff about his dad, like, I was like, okay, yeah, no, that that explains why he's such an asshole. Ryan, is that the one I, where they're, like, sacrificing stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it ends, and then it ends with beer. Just, maybe we should do this outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, see, that's, I was like, that's a good way to hit comedy after an emotional beat. Because I was like, okay, no, that, that all hit. That was perfect timing and everything. Um, but watching them all, like, kind of go together from Jamie learning to pass to Roy learning to lead and eventually know when it's time to throw in the towel and then Nate becoming a coach. Like it, I enjoyed watching them all grow. And then I love Roy and Keeley together. Also, I am beard. I, 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 <laughs> am beard. I would definitely do the whole chess game thing to flirt with someone and then screw it up by winning. <laughs> you are a little weird like beard, right? <laughs> but we love beard anyway. Just like we love Ryan. Kevin, what about you? Uh, one thing I liked about the show uh, is that it's quite literally therapy, the show, for people who've experienced <laughs> toxic and or one-sided relationships. Like every thematic element of the show feels like a break, like a breakthrough the creators had while in therapy sessions. And they apply those breakthroughs to the characters to help the audience under better understand the themes at play. Um, like there's actual like terminology that therapists use uh with their patients uh just the, sprinkled throughout the show and especially like the the description of the panic attack not only do they show it visually and audibly but also like they have ted like actually verbally explain the symptoms mm -hmm. of a panic attack but like it's not like saying 
looking at the camera and listing the symptoms, it's more like it is presented in a way of where like the character is like, oh, well, my chest feels weird and the walls are closing in. Like, like, you know, it's presented dramatically. So that mm-hmm. way, like it still uh, keeps the audience's attention. Um, so it's a very, very good show in just, you know, presenting uh, mental health and like how to move on from those toxic relationships of their past. Uh, it's gorgeous. And yes, I am crying. <laughs> the show actually got me to cry a few times. Let's uh, go! Just in, just in the first season. <laughs> Let's Kevin, go! All I gotta say is just wait till season two. God, I can't oh, wait boy. for you to see season two. It's funny. I, I, I know a little spoiler about Nate. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Someone spoiled it for me, but also, oh, so yeah, it was like one of the major reviews of the third, like a major criticism of the third season as well that was kind of like popped up in my timeline. Mm. The third season... With that Nate spoiler, it pays mm-hmm. off. I like what okay. they do with it. Yeah. But I will say the third season is probably the weakest of all oh. three seasons. Is it's the still third s- season technically the ending? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, the- they only wanted to do three seasons from the get-go. We think okay. there's going to be a spinoff show like that's called like AFC Richmond or something, where it's mm-hmm. like basically just the Dacus is no longer part of it. Like Ted's no longer here. Right. It sounds like season four was teased, but... Ted Lasso is not in it. I think maybe it might just continue under the Ted Lasso name. Yeah, we'll see. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this this story wraps up in season three. Like it's done. Okay. Um, cool. It's good, but it does. It slips a little in season three. Duly noted. Uh, on that note, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll give you more thoughts on Ted Lasso season one. See you in a bit. Hey everybody, my name is Jordan, and you've probably heard me on an episode or two, but did you know I also have a baking channel? Bluebell Bake is by The Amateur Baker for The Amateur Baker. On the channel, I'll be posting recipes, tips and tricks, and more so we can all learn to better our baking skills. You can find my channel on YouTube at Bluebell Bake, we're currently posting monthly, or on Instagram and TikTok, both at bluebell.bake. Come join our little community where no matter what happens, we keep on baking. Don't you wish there was a pop culture review site that appealed to cinephiles, both professional and casual? Well, look no further than crprights.com. New content such as movie and TV reviews, film essays, and more are released every week by writers who crave for movies like every moviegoer craves for popcorn. CRP Rights is dedicated to making sure no one is wasting time or money where they shouldn't be. After all, you have to be able to buy your popcorn and eat it too. CRPWrites.com. Casual reviews with purpose since 2018. And welcome back to Committed Critics as we continue to talk about Ted Lasso Season 1. And now we're going to talk about one thing we didn't like. Is that possible? We'll find out. Zach, hit us off. No notes. Jordan, hit us off. What Zach said. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I will say, if it's one thing I didn't like, I'll do it for the whole series. Like I just said before the break, season three is mm-hmm. where it kind of gets slippery a little bit. Mm-hmm. This way, have something to talk about. Like uh-huh. season three is still really good, but there are some things it's kind of like, all right, we're halfway through the season. We don't worry about this right now. Like that's what we're focusing on. Um, there's a relationship at the end of this at the end of the series where it's like, all right, well, I guess we do we have to do this. There are certain like just question marks. It's just like, why? Why are we focusing on this? But I will say the last episode of the entire series hits the landing, sticks the fucking landing hard. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Duly noted. Uh, my only critique of season one would be that I think the season peaks in the middle and kind of fizzles out at the end. But like. When I say fizzles out at the end, I don't mean like it goes to like a much worse quality. It like it still has a level of quality that it stays within uh, that is still really good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, it just kind of like the end. The season finale was didn't feel as season finale as I was hoping for. Uh, but like the whereas, you know, the heights of it it's all, of the whole season is in the middle. Uh, other than that, no notes. But I think that's like kind of what plays into it, though, right? Like that's that's life. If you think yeah, about I, it, like there's bit. not going to always also, be a satisfying thing. 
Right. And also, it, it, I think, well, I mean, it also plays a lot into the binge watching aspect mm-hmm. of it where it's like, well, it didn't feel like a season finale, so I'm just going to keep going on. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I kind of uh, I kind of agree with that because I was like, Zach, I know I told you I had four more episodes when I came down to visit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, now that I watched those four episodes, I'm like, yeah, I was like, I think I hit the high point when I, before I left. Yeah, it's after the it's the like the scene you talk about, Ryan. It's the burning scene. That's where it kind of peaks, in my opinion. But then you yeah, do get that's the, why I felt you do get the panic attack, which I think is very critical to the rest of Ted's story. I mm-hmm. mean, um, definitely, mm-hmm. definitely in season two for sure. And then I think just the dart scene is just perfect. I'll watch it on TikTok yeah, every think, time it comes on you for for you page. <laughs> I think those time. scenes were good. I was just like, man, nothing's gonna beat this burn. <laughs> Kevin Actually, I I my, I see the burn episode wasn't my favorite. It's the one I think it was the one before that where it was the 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 gala episode. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that, that was, was my favorite one. Good. So many things happen in that episode right there. It's insane. Yeah, so many yeah. things happen. <laughs> but uh, uh, how about you, Ryan? What's one thing you did not like? One thing I did not like was just Rebecca going back to being. I'm sorry for my language, but she's going back to being a bitch every single time. That was fair. Heck so, yeah, brother. Because I was just like, yo, okay, I get it. It was like, it made sense like in the beginning. But then as soon as she finds out he makes the cookies, that should have been the end of it. I'm sorry. I mean, if I'm you like, just... Divorce makes you do terrible things, dude. If he was cheating on you pretty much for 10 years of your entire aunt, like relationship and the entire football club knew and helped him do it, mm-hmm. you would be a little bitter too, right? Mm-hmm. I would be bitter, but I'm not screwing over this lasso dude who actually is a nice dude. You know, you just, say that <laughs> he's a tool, uh, like literally a tool no, for her. If I if I need to get back, she at hired someone, him just... because she because she thought that his simple like mindset would cause the company to fail. So, like, she's not going in. She's not seeing Ted Lasso the same way that we, the audience, see Ted Lasso. Look, there's easier ways. He pops up everywhere, drops something in his drink, and kill him, kill the man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, then they murder. Then she would have to hire a new coach. No, for Rupert. No, Rupert. No. Uh, Rupert. Yeah, kill Rupert. I'm, this is easy. Just bang. I will say, like Rebecca. I know. I know you still have a, a, the rest of your point to finish, but Rebecca's growth and just her character development throughout the entire series, I think, is just so good. Oh yeah, one of the best redemption stories. Oh yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like I do know it's part of the plot. I know it's meant to help her grow. So it's like it's. It's good that she does grow, um, but that's one of my least favorite things about dramas is that they have to create drama. So they're just like, because like after the whole burning scene, after like they keep accepting her, accepting her, accepting her. And every single time they do, she just like goes back and says, you know what? I'm still going to screw you all over. And I'm like, I'm happy that they resolved it before the end of the season, because if that had been the entire series, I would have just been like, yeah, this is trash. But. I'm happy it was resolved and that she actually like kind of like admitted like, hey, I messed up. And Ted was immediately like, yeah, I forgive you. Like, I, I really was expecting him to blow up a little bit because we only saw him blow up once, really. And the only thing you, you see with like you see with that, right, is a relationship where it's like they both are like victims of divorce. Right. And how that affects them both. So, of course, yeah. Ted's got understanding what, what they're going what she's going through. Um, Ted being the most empathetic person of all. He can forgive anyone, but not himself, basically. Yeah, mm. I mean, um, they're, they're both victims of a little bit more than divorce. I will say that. Well, of course, yeah, <laughs> a little, yeah, yeah. little bit more. Yeah, I well, mean, it was like Ted's came yeah. out. Ted's came out of nowhere. I was just like, "Yo, all right." Oh, just, just wait till season. Just wait till season two and three, friends. Oh man, with Ted's divorce, uh, it, there's more to it. Can, oh, can I no. ask, guys? <laughs> do you guys have like a favorite character, or like even a favorite like team member on there? I already told. I already told you mine. I, for, I forgot. I think it was Beard. Probably. Beard. <laughs> uh, Ted's my favorite character. I think. Um, he, I just really like. I just really like the character how he's written. Uh, it's a good role model. For sure, Ted's a great model. Yeah. Beard. Beard is my favorite just because I relate to him. I was like, okay, I get you, man. It was like he's just the kind of guy in the background. If a close second would probably be Higgins, because Higgins uh. just it's Higgins. <laughs> Ted and Roy my, are tied for my favorite. Just because Roy can make me laugh my ass off anytime he says something so stupid in his like low ass voice. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. I would say like uh, I'm trying to because I now that I know like how the entire show it like ends and everything, 
my character is kind of my favorite character is kind of changed. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Ted is all Ted is great. Always love Ted. Um, I really like Danny. He's just so happy. Danny Ro- He's just so happy to be there. Um, <laughs> I really like Sam. <laughs> Sam, yeah. um, he plays a good part in it. At the end, though, I don't know. I think Who it might be Jamie. He's the African guy. Obasanya. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm like, who's Sam? Sam Obasanya. Oh, no. Come, on. Come on, come on, Zach. You <laughs> got to remember who those like, people are. I know, right? <laughs> I know there's a lot of white people in this, but you got to remember that one black. Also, Jamie Roy. Jamie's redemption arc, unmatched. Whoa. On a Prince Zuko level of redemption arc. Please, please tell me he punches his dad out. <laughs> he doesn't. Well, someone does. Dang it. Ah, oh, all right. Wait. Yeah. Also, you know, yeah, he does later. Yeah. Season two. Spoilers. Also, I uh, changed my thing. My favorite quote from this show is uh, you're more. You're, I've never seen African more in prison in his mind than Nelson Mandela. <laughs> 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 that was like that line killed me for the rest of the show. It's the one liners that you just forget about and you remember like when you're going through your day. It's like whenever like Higgins makes his first pun and Ted hears it after the door is already shut. And he just bursts and he through bursts the door. He's like, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Final thoughts. Really great one liners. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, I will definitely continue the show and I hope Apple gives this show a physical release as well as making it accessible and other video on demand platforms. I mean, come on, Apple. Don't you love money? It's literally all you care about. <laughs> I will buy a physical copy of Ted Lasso so fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Ryan. Complete series Blu-ray box set win. So I come to the end of this after all this love and all this joy. And I say, will I continue it? Probably not. <laughs> Only because I think season one had a satisfying conclusion. To me, anyway. And two, the later seasons are longer episodes. And this is just not for me anymore. <laughs> I don't think they get Sorry. too long, much longer until I think the end of season two. Yeah, it's, like, they, I saw midway through season two starts getting like it gradually starts getting longer to like the season two finale. I think is a full hour. Yeah, yeah, that that that's rough on me now. You won't even notice the time. You won't notice mm-hmm. the time go by. I mean, I was barely noticing the time when it was twenty minutes. I was like, oh, the episode's over. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Uh, there were times where going through season one, I'm like, man, we still have a lot to get through for this episode. And I'm like, man, this 30 minutes is feeling a lot longer than it should be. But I'm like, I'm I don't care. I'm here. Yeah, you just went. I would. I would. I sat and watched. I watched it in two sittings. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So like half season, uh, one night, half a season the other night. Did not feel the time. Uh, Ryan, definitely so try I, to continue it at some point, just because you will see the Jamie arc you want. You will see the Rebecca arc you want, and you'll get to know so much more about the therapy Kevin was talking about earlier. I think All right. for Ryan, Amazon needs to sorry, Apple needs to make a Ted Lasso anime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's Blue Lock. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's a, it has a soccer anime. It's soccer but anime. Is it about the power of friendship and family? What anime is it? I mean, not Shonen. <laughs> Anyways, go on, Zach. What's your final thought on Ted Lasso season one? It's perfect. Perfect. How about you, Jordan? It is a fucking fantastic show. You can't say that on YouTube. (laughs) You gotta say that with a British accent, Jordan. (laughs) No. Um, But Kevin, I agree with you that a physical form of the series would be chef's kiss. Oh, my God. I think it would sell very well. Oh, it would sell amazing. It would sell incredible it would say also if they do like a collector's edition like you can make that a hundred dollars and i would fork it over so fast (laughs) like and a great demand is there apple just do it what Um, i'm what i'm waiting for honestly is that um we have like a soccer store uh by us um and i really i have never gone inside because i know they're not going to have like afc richmond jerseys or anything like that uh but (laughs) The small part of me just hopes that one day, one day they will have something and I will buy it so fast. Walk in with some Ted Lasso cosplay. (laughs) Oh, there we go. Bro, I'll go as Ted Lasso for Halloween. Don't you you tell me right now. I could go as Rebecca. She's tall. Well, there you go, I guess. (laughs) Oh, Lord. I'm going to see a Ted Lasso Rebecca Halloween pick. 
Uh, so yeah, so that covers Ted Lasso season one for us. Uh, we may cover other seasons in the future or maybe the complete series whenever uh, I ha- we have time to catch up. Uh, as of right now, I, I like I've been busy with uh, working on some projects, but then after this current project this week, it is strike time. Uh, that's right, folks. I am going on strike all- because there's no work for me. <laughs> Not because uh, he wants to, it's by he's being forced to. It's it's basically because I don't have the money to want to, um, which is. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So before we end this episode, I just want to say, you know, the writer's strike, the actor strike. I'm in full support of it. I know friends who are on the picket lines. Uh, so, you know, they, it's, it's for a good cause. These streamers, Apple TV included, has just been screwing over a lot of people in terms of royalties because contracts were never properly negotiated. Uh, so hope and uh, and you know these streamers are sweating because uh, they're deleting a lot of content off their platforms uh, to make to, get, to make the money back to pay the unions. And you know, from the behind the scenes perspective, distributors are not buying any movies right now as well because they're trying to save that money to pay back the unions. Uh, so content is going to be wild for a bit um, in terms of like, you know, scripted content, if it even exists, uh, it was going to be pretty wild. And then it's going to be a lot of reality TV, which is as someone who's worked on reality TV for it is dirty. I do not I like can't it. <laughs> wait. Also, oh, yes, of course, we also we support all the SAG unions in our oh, region, yeah. 100%. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't wait to see the next uh, Transformers movie that comes out during the strike. Oh I know, right? Because as you know, 2008 was uh, Revenge of the Fallen, and that came out during the writer's strike. And yeah, that really? was the dog water fucking... That's why that, it was so fucking that terrible. That explains so much. Yeah. Heroes, uh, uh, the writer's uh, strike happened after season one. And then, yeah, then you can... And anyone who's seen Heroes saw what happened there. <laughs> Rest in peace, Heroes. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so, you know, hopefully things get worked out. It seems like uh the the big people in charge don't want to pay people who's surprised by that anyways enough about nope. politics um uh, let's talk about another movie that i'm challenging called parasite which is definitely not Ooh. about politics <laughs> <laughs> no not at all not even a little bit <laughs> not even a little bit so yeah i'm challenging you guys to watch the uh the korean film parasite you know best picture winner i should say um, Jordan, I am going to challenge you to watch the black and white version of the movie okay. uh, that I will supply you uh, that is exclusive to the Criterion Collection. Oh, okay. Uh, on that note, if you want to hear the rest of our thoughts about other topics, tune into our full episode over on Patreon. Link to that is below in the <laughs> description. You can follow us on Twitter at Committed Crits uh, for however much longer that's going to live. That's becoming a mess. We're on. Uh, we should probably be on threads at some point. Folks. Yeah, I was like, as soon as like the, the, the recent updates started getting implemented, it's like, mm, I think I might switch to threads. <laughs> threads is uh, lit. Sounds, I love threads. Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's just threads. It's also just it's a Facebook app. It's not so. much better. It's not much better. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's like they already have Instagram and Facebook. Like, do they really need threads? I mean, I guess whatever. Anyways. Uh, you can also follow us on YouTube at Committed Critics and TikTok at Committed Critics if if TikTok is accessible in your state. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, special thanks to our current patrons, Davey Peppers from Game Mechanics, Ryan Kolokowski from Ryan Plays Drums, Andy Phillips from Andy Phillips, Jody Wright, Devin Vonderheide, and Brandon Morales. And we will see you in two weeks. Bye.